Hi, Helen here at Brookhouse Croft. Today I thought I'd talk to you a little bit about bluebells. Here we have an example of our British bluebell, also known as an English bluebell. Although it is actually native right the way across Western Europe, not just the UK. Its Latin name is Hyacinthoides non scripta. It has this distinctive drooping habit and sometimes will droop right over to one side and all the flowers are carried on one side looking like a shepherd's crook. It has lovely sweet perfume and cream pollen. The flowers themselves are straight sided, the ends of which turn back on themselves as the petals age. The leaves, leaves are narrow, a bit like grass, often mistaken for rough grass when the flowers are finished. And it generally flowers in April and May, depending upon whereabouts you are in the British Isles. Historically, Hyacinthoides non scripta has a range of uses. In medieval times, it was used medicinally for stemming the flow of blood. Its sap is extremely sticky, as you'd find if you break any of the stems. And the same property was also used by Fletchers to stick feathers to arrows. In modern times, it's being researched because it holds a range of alkaloid chemicals that are very similar to existing cancer and HIV drugs. So there may be some modern use for it as well. This is the Spanish bluebell, or Hyacinthoides hispanica. It was introduced by the Victorians as being a more garden-worthy plant than our native bluebells. And as you can see, it's a much larger plant and it holds far more flowers on each stem. The stems are strong and upright and it comes in a range of colours from the usual dark blue to pale blue, mauves, pinks and whites. The leaves are much thicker, a bit more what you would assume from a hyacinth type plant. Unlike the native bluebell, it doesn't have any scent and also strangely the pollen is blue. Here we have some hybrid bluebells that I've picked from the garden. As you can see, they're carrying the characteristics of both the native bluebell and the Spanish bluebell. It has plenty of flowers on each stem, like the Spanish bluebell, and it flares outwards in a bell shape. But like the native bluebell, it droops to one side. Also, the pollen tends to be cream, and occasionally it will have a bit of scent to it. Unlike the native bluebell, the hybrid will grow anywhere, a bit like the Spanish bluebell. So you'll find it in any garden border, from shaded right the way through to full sun. It doesn't mind, it will tolerate anything, and that's why it's such a good garden plant. Just to confuse things a little bit further, there's also a Scottish bluebell. But this flowers a lot later in the year, usually in July and August and is not actually a member of the hyacinth family, but is a campanula, campanula rotundifolia. And unlike these bluebells that you find in woodland and in gardens, it's generally a flower that you find out in the open meadowland. So it can be seen to be totally different. At one point, the Spanish bluebell was considered something to be feared, that it was going to wipe out our native bluebell. But it's been discovered recently that it's genetically weaker than our native bluebell. So where they do cross-pollinate and hybridise, the seed from the Spanish bluebell tends to be the hybrids, whereas the seed from our native bluebell tends to remain pure. So any established woodlands where there are, there are native bluebells should remain intact. The bother comes where bulbs have been dumped near woodland or have perhaps crossed over from gardens nearby. But as long as we keep the Spanish bluebell within our gardens and don't let it move out into woodland, we should remain the pure bluebell woodlands for centuries to come. I hope that clears something up and gives you a clearer picture of what the different bluebells look like. And hopefully when you see the Spanish bluebell, you won't be tempted to dig it out quite so quickly. Okay, thanks. Bye for now.